Thanks, Angie. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to get right into it. So I have two uh, worksheets uh, that I'm going to present today. The first one I thought it was really important was to start off with a design worksheet because it is so core to what we do as uh, civil engineers. So I'll start there and then I'll go on and look at a bit of a section analysis uh, with the second worksheet. Um, so, so right off the bat, you're seeing my worksheet, my design worksheet. So this uh, looks at doubly reinforced uh, rectangular concrete beam and it does, it figures out what the moment resistance is for that concrete beam. But hopefully what you're seeing is something that would look very similar to what you would do if you were doing this by hand. Uh, and that's the intent because it communicates not just uh, the calculations themselves, but also the theory, the background, the logic that goes through the resolution of the problem. So I did want to start out with just kind of some fundamentals about what MathCAD is, because I'm sure we have people in the audience uh, that have perhaps never used it before. And so if you see my cursor, I, I'm hanging around the geometric properties here to the right of I brought the image in from PowerPoint. Uh, and, and saved it as a PNG because I like the transparent background. So very flexible choice of presentation. Uh, so I have my two variables defined. So I have the, the width and the height defined as B and H. And you notice that there's a colon equal sign. And so that defines B as 250 millimeters. It defines H as 500 millimeters. Well, I can now use those because they've been defined. I go just below it. And if I wanted to know the area and I can define the area as B times H. Now, in this case, I'm going to use a different equal sign. I'm going to use the calculate equal sign and it comes up and it's able to calculate that because B and H have been defined. Now, I know there was a question about units, so it, it's choosing the base unit meters squared. Uh, if I wanted that as millimeters squared, I could choose millimeters squared and it will recalculate it. And because it separates calculation units from display units, if I wanted to go back in here and change that to square inches, I can do that and it's going to do the, the uh, conversion uh, for you. So that's not what this is about, but in understanding that, you're able to look at the sheet and kind of understand the logic and the layout that's doing it. Now, it does work on a sort of top to bottom, left to right topology. So for example, if I was to take, well, let's say our, our B variable here, if it showed up below the, the um, formula that uses it, it doesn't recognize B anymore because it's below it. So it has to be top to bottom, left to right uh, formatting. So let's get rid of that and let's get into this uh, a little bit. Um, so I'm a structural engineer. Uh, this is about civil engineering, so it's bigger than just uh, structural engineers. Uh, but I hope you can look at this sheet and you can see that the nature of the calculations are really the same regardless of which subdiscipline of civil engineering you're working in. So I've laid out my sheet. I think the communication aspects that Angie was highlighting uh, really come across uh, between the images, the text, the labeling, uh, and, and then the way the math components are actually laid out. And we see material properties and everything else. And, and I try to lay out my worksheets to do the best of that. Um, so the first thing I do is I, I use the collapsible areas quite a bit. You'll definitely see it in the second sheet. And that is shown here by this line. That's a collapsible area that has a whole lot of calculations going on inside of it. And what I've done is I've hit what are, are you know, some things that you don't have to see all the time, but you can open it up and, and see it when you need to. And then I've put the summary information just below it. So that if that's all you're interested in, you can leave it collapsed and focus on the component or the part of the worksheet that interests you the most. So I'm just going to pop it open here by pressing the plus sign, you know, scroll up so you can see where we came from. And now you see this collapsible area opened up in front of us. And in this collapsible area, we're going to select the reinforcing bars for the beam and compute the effective depth. Now, as you will see in all of my sheets, I always put my references to the right. So you see the code reference here. Now I'm using the Canadian code. So CSA 23.3. Um, if you're using ACI code or Euro code, it really doesn't matter. They're, one, they're all <laughs> fairly similar. Uh, but two, you would just build your worksheet to, to reflect whatever code uh, is uh, in force in the area of jurisdiction that you're doing your work for. So... Couple of the features that I wanted to point out. So the first one is 
a drop down uh, combo box. Uh, and so where I'm using it here, so I have a variable. So exp is a variable for the exposure. And on the drop down box, I'm assigning it to one of three conditions, which the code allows for and changes the amount of cover that we need, depending on whether it's exposed or not exposed. And, and so having done that, the next feature is this uh, logic box, right? So we have a logic box, uh, which is uh, using some very, very simple programming to assign to the variable cover the amount of cover required, depending on what the string uh, is that is assigned to the variable exp. Now I finish that off, I go down right to the bottom here. And the other thing we have to account for is that it's not just the cover based on the exposure, but it also has to be the greater of that value or one and a half times the maximum dimension of our aggregates. And so we're able to take into account those types of multiple code requirements uh, by using e you know, either uh, a logic box itself or these inline functions where I can say maximum of cover or one and a half times the area max. And then that returns the value based on this logic and we get a cover value. So it works out really quite nice to be able to compactly build the fundamental requirements of the code uh, in one spot. So I'm gonna keep scrolling down. So I use another combo box and I use it multiple times. And so here, I'm using a combo box to assign the reinforcing bars. Now this list basically gives us all of the metric standard reinforcing bars that we use. And if you're working in uh, um, Imperial units, uh, then you would just have a different, build yourself a different combo box. Now I wanna go into the edit mode just to show you what's behind the scenes. So if I go into edit, this is the data table that I put in to be incorporated into this combo box. And so we select the bar, that's what's in the first row. And what shows up is, or what it does, is it assigns to the array of the variable that is uh, tagged to it, two elements. The first element will be the first, the, or the uh, number from the first row, or first column, pardon me. Uh, and it's going to be the area in millimeters squared. Now I've, uh, I'll go back in a second because I, I created a custom units here. And I want to point that out uh, be, uh, just because the combo box doesn't really like exponents uh, in its columns. But this is 500 millimeters squared. So it's picking that up if you were to choose a 25M. And then in the second element of the array, it's picking up the diameter, which is 25.2 millimeters. So if I pop back out, you can see if I change this, it's going to come up with different numbers. And what I'm doing in the subsequent equations is assigning the first element of the array back to the uh, area of the bar used in the compression steel or the diameter of the bar used in the diameter steel for the second element of the array. And so it makes it a really nice, easy way uh, to uh, select from a data table. So I had alluded, and I meant to mention it earlier, I'm gonna scroll back up to the top. So up to the top here, uh, great control. So the first one is the origin. So any array or matrix of course, you have the elements of the array or matrix and they have an index. Now by default, MathCAD chooses an index of zero and you can find that up in the calculation tab if you like. Uh, I prefer to work with uh, the first element having an index of one. And so I reset the origin of my arrays to have that. And I like to put it here uh, directly on the, the sheet itself. So anybody looking at it can see that I have reset the origin to one. And the second one was, is I assigned a custom uh, unit, MMS, to be the same as millimeter squared. And that allowed me to, to draw that out from the combo box. So that kind of was that what that was about. And, and so this is all now going through the calculations. And of course, I'm not going through the math itself. I'm showing features of MathCAD that allow us to do our calculations as we go through. So we get a lot of use out of this combo box because the same one, is being used in multiple times to set the bar for the uh, compression steel, the tension steel, as well as the stirrups for the shear reinforcement. The only thing that's changing is the variable to which it's being assigned. So bar prime in one case, bar in the second case, and stirrup in the third case. 
And I finish off this set of calculations really, again, by using one of these inline equations that chooses the maximum of 1.4 times the bar diameter or 1.4 times the ma maximum aggregate size or 30 millimeters. So whichever is greater and we get a different number. So that's some of the features which I think are, are really great. I'm going to collapse that down and we can carry on looking at our calculations. So in 1B, we're checking the minimum tension steel, right, which is a code requirement.